Hey guys, the first days of 2022, Happy New Year. I'm here in Schorl in uh, North Holland. It's a place in the dunes of uh, the Netherlands, close to the sea. And we have here, as you can see, pretty nice ups and downs. Last year was uh, the year when I was thinking to do the full Ironman and I've done my only bike video about my Kenyan Speedmax, uh, the time trial bike. I did not do the full Ironman and I did not uh, uh, do the video about the full Ironman because the plans have changed drastically. Um, I got a starting ticket on the uh, pretty tough uh, mountain biking race. They say it's the toughest in the world. Ooh. And it's super unexpected. Um, so I managed to finish the Cape Epic in South Africa and really really happy about it uh, it came as a as an invitation from one of my friends uh, and i was a complete rookie in the mountain biking so i did not even have the mountain bike and immediately did that so uh, it was quite interesting and then i, I caught a mountain biking fever ever since so i'm uh, now uh, happily uh, training here as well in, in squirrel but i just want to give you some advice as a rookie how uh, to finish uh, the the Cape Epic being a complete rookie. So it's an advice about the bike mainly, but uh, I also attach the checklist that you can do uh, to, to, to get uh, to, the, to the finish of that uh, tough race, which is eight days, 620 kilometers and 15 and a half uh, kilometers of the climbing. So about the bike, this is the bike that um, I've ridden on and uh, I was really, really lucky to get it. So back in August, when I got uh, the, the starting entry, I, I did not even have a bike, so I found this one at the time of a pretty uh, uh, difficult availability of the mountain bikes. I got it used, so it's, um, it's a specialized S-Works uh, with a uh, name which is fittingly Epic. So S-Works Epic World Cup. The stuff for the pros, it's uh, about four or five years old and I got it in a pretty mint condition. I've done several modifications to it and I just wanted to tell you um, a little bit more about what I've done to it. So, um, well, first of all, the nicest investment that I've done is I've changed my pretty skinny specialized uh, fast track tires to the Maxxis um, tires here, the, the Arden race. Uh, uh, I used to have 195 here and uh, 2.2 or something uh, at the front. These, both of these are 235 and they're much grippier and I felt much better on them. And I found that most of the people that they raced there either had Schwalbe or, or Maxis. Uh, Maxis was pretty dominant, I would say. Um, what else? Well, there's one thing that I did not get and I really, really uh, strongly recommend getting you. So, uh, getting that stuff. I, I got the 41 uh, cassette here, which is uh, uh, a standard here in the Netherlands, I guess, but it's definitely not sufficient for those stuff climbs that uh, we used to have in South Africa. So. 51 is the minimum. I ended up walking a lot of these climbs. Well, a lot of people did. Unless uh, you're really, really powerful, you cannot do anything there. Uh, on the 41, even on 51, it's pretty tough. So make sure you have a good cassette. Um, what else? I got myself pretty nice handlebars. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about what to get. Because uh, Cape Epic is all about really, really long uh, stages where you need to be comfortable. And I was thinking about the pretty big um, Ergon uh, handlebars, but those were not very light and, uh, uh, and looked a little bit slippery. So I thought that this uh, GA3 model is quite nice. So on one hand, it's pretty grippy and it's light, but also you can you know, rest, your, rest your palm just like that. So it's, that's, that's quite nice. Um, I still have my last stage stickers here, so I'm going to keep it as, as long as possible because uh, I grew kind of attached uh, to the whole thing and the, and the experience. Um, a lot of people don't have the SWAT box um, on their uh, uh, Specialized. I, I did choose to get one. It was supposed to come with it, but I got it used, so I did not have it. It's quite, it's quite nice. Fully um, watertight, I would say. But uh, yeah, you can fit one uh, tube here, the CO2 canister, um, and it's a fairly, fairly convenient solution. What I also got are two bottle holders and about the bottles and the whole drinking thing. Well, um, it's probably very practical to use the backpack. 
Well, if you don't use the backpack, uh, make sure you uh, take the bottles from the organizers. These are quite nice. These are mountain biking bottles because, as you can see, you can cover the spout with the, with the cover. And that's pretty uh, important. Why? Because uh, stuff gets pretty dirty and you can easily uh, finish the race uh, by having problems with your stomach. So uh, make sure you drink the, uh, from the clean, clean spout. Um, pretty important stuff for the newbie. Uh, I saw some people riding without them, but uh, most of the people had the, the dropper post. I have the, uh, the transfer cell from Fox and it's uh, pretty springy like this. It has a very short travel, but for me it was sufficient. Um, I did get more and more comfortable on the long descents using the, the drop post. So that's my bike, pretty happy about it. Um, it used to be a top of the line model. Uh, it's a full carbon setup and so it's pretty light. It has a carbon frame, uh, you know, carbon steering, ca carbon stem, carbon cranks, uh, even carbon seat and the carbon rail. So it used to weigh uh, nine and a half kilos before I started upgrading it. So with the, um, with the dropper post and, and some other modification, it got a little bit heavier, but uh, I'm still pretty happy about it. So um, a bit more advice uh, of what to get and what not to get. Um, actually, if you're going to Cape Epic, uh, I would say don't take the suitcase because they give you a very nice rider bag there and it's a pretty nice souvenir um, in its own. Uh, so yeah, uh, try to get everything there in some sort of a cardboard box or some dis uh, disposable bag and then you can travel back there with a, with a nice bag. Um, what else uh, did I get there that I did not need? Uh, I took with me a lots of nutrition. Uh, and I didn't need it uh, really because um, I spent some of it, but um, most of the time I relied on the water points uh, the, from the organizers and those are really nice. So you can get there um, all the gels, all the power bars, um, uh, even magnesium uh, pills uh, available at every water point. So that was really, really nice. Um, I carried with me this um, nice little tool bag. So um, it's, a, it's a team event. You have uh, two riders per team and then you can share the load so uh, i got myself this uh, this tool to uh, fix the tubeless tires and uh, from crank brothers the stuff that uh, can repair the uh, the chain and the missing links are hiding in here and we're carrying a pump we're carrying some of the um, allen keys as well um, and some of the first aid kit so that was quite cool that was um, pretty unexpected uh, thing that happened uh, with me in 2021. Super happy about it. Um, not, you know, everyone who starts the race finishes it. I think about 10 or 15% people who started the race uh, didn't manage to finish it due to crashes, uh, due to problems with the stomach or whatever. So yeah, consider myself lucky, uh, especially now we got uh, into that small window when the Delta was gone and the Omicron didn't uh, come up. So <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, all the best for 2022 and ride on!